to Jesse Bernard's daughters. So we have Janet Kigusu, Mary Yusuke, and Miriam Kia on this wall. And my compliments to Brad, who works for Pat, and who did such a wonderful job of installing these exhibitions, uh, these wall hangings. You can see in Janet Kigusu's work, um, she is she very much has that clear outline that Jesse Umark had in terms of her figures. She adds a lot of uh, details, and she can name everybody in this piece. <laughs> so she was very much a storyteller, um, but rooted in the everyday world. And I love this piece because you can see she's actually got these amazing eyelashes on these faces, <laughs> and the little ruff of fur around the hood. Um, her husband was deaf mute, and so she had to sign um, everything she wanted to say. She had to sign to him or act out. And this just became part of her personality. Even after he passed away, she would still do that. And so she's very descriptive in the work that she does. Mary Yusupi is known primarily as a carver. Sorry, if you can go on. I think there's two figures at the bottom left. They're kneeling down. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. I didn't get that. <laughs> yeah. No, they're kneeling down. Um, so Mary Yusupi um, generally does very, she too can identify all the people. She's quite the storyteller. She's a lovely woman, um, has been unhappily married for years and years and years and years. So she tells us. <laughs> she looks perfectly happy to be with. She says she was she was forced in, or she had an arranged marriage and she was just never quite happy with that. And so she'll often tell the story of this of being um, hoisted over her husband's shoulder and taken off to another camp. So the camp life is sometimes positive and sometimes negative for her. But in this work, it's it's particularly lovely. And she wanted to do a spring camp. So. Me and my infinite wisdom, I gave her a beige duffel. I thought, well, that's nice and light. That'll be good for spring. And I had given her all these soft colors. And so she actually transformed the background to suit her own taste by putting in this blue uh, felt. And so I was quite surprised when she brought it. And it had been, it's totally different from what I thought she was going to make. And it's not easy having to sew felt on felt. And if you look carefully, she has tiny, tiny little stitches and beautiful fringe work um, on her pieces. So, and then creating this sense of water, really brilliantly executed. Marie, are those mosquitoes on the tent? This here? Yeah. No, this is to mimic fur. This is what they call oh. a turkey stitch. As you oh. see here, the animal, the dogs have the fur as well. I just thought it might be so buggy that that's. Well, that's a good that's a, a good <laughs> guess, but no, that's uh, to represent fur. So. I'm kind of relieved, in a weird sense, to see that there haven't been too much evolution in the work. In other areas of the Inuit world, they're evolving very quickly, and they they're, 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 don't know their past any longer. And this group here, very much uh, associating with their I think a lot of that was also due to the fact that everybody was talking about Nunavut, the establishment of Nunavut, and the big land claim that was coming. And so that was foremost in their mind. Um, and also, uh, I'm, an, I'm an art historian by training, and so I was always interested in the history stories that they had to tell. And a lot of that came out visually. 